over to the carburetor. These tests are for the calibration of carburetor needles in relation to detonation tests on various types of fuel. The piston has quite a load on its mind as it works on a diet of varying octaves. The piston lift indicator gives a micrometer exact measurement of piston lift in relation to engine speed and power and enables the engineer to design the complex contour of the carburetor needle. The science of electronics is an important ally of the research engineers who make great use of the stroboscope lamp and the cathode ray oscilloscope in the study of vibration. Here is the oscilloscope in use a living landscape of electric currents whose fluctuations indicate for the technicians the character of the vibrations of a camshaft under test. The oscilloscope makes it possible for some of the hidden secrets of vibration to be more easily understood. While camshaft vibrations are measured in this way, other electronic apparatus helps in the analysis of high-speed movement. These valves, for example, are moving at a speed which makes it quite impossible for the unassisted eye to observe any exact detail of their movement. Yet, under the intermittent light of the stroboscope lamp, they can be studied with ease. The stroboscope lamp is a controlled frequency flashing light which makes it possible for high-speed mechanical movements to be viewed in apparent slow motion. Now for a series of endurance tests, each one automatic and continued without interval through each and every day. First, a test rig for brake master cylinders. The objective is twofold, to determine the life of the cup washer in the master cylinder and also to ensure that there is no time lag between the operation of brakes and the switching on and off of stoplights. Meanwhile, this hard-working test rig is set the task of testing door lock mechanism for endurance. It's the grand slam for door locks. How many times is the driver's door opened and closed during the life of an average car? This is the answer, plus a safe margin. Back to the brake stoplights. The dial indicates the load applied to the pressure line connecting the stoplight switches to the master cylinder. But it's a load without a power cut. The light will flash on and off until the switches have passed 50,000 cycles or are rejected because of failure. What is the effect of five or ten years of vibration on motor car components? The magnetically operated vibration table gives the answer in a very short time. It enables small components to be tested to limits of fatigue far beyond normal. This bumping rig for leaf springs is a variant on the same theme, although the motive power is different. A spring has to survive a hundred thousand full stress cycles. So to the measuring of thread wear on swivel pins and links. The kingpins are exercised under a constant static load. It is a test which compares the thread wear of kingpins made of variously hardened metals. The fatigue testing of torsion bars follows much the same pattern as for leaf springs, except that in their case, of course, the strain is entirely torsional. They have to stand up to half a million full stress cycles. It's a real endurance for this latest type of spring, developed by Nuffield Research, to give maximum springing results for minimum weight. The track rod ball end test shows how accurately a laboratory test can simulate actual road conditions. From the small container, an intermittent supply of water and graded grit is fed to each track rod ball end. Road shock vibration is induced into the track rod by way of a vibrator driven by a small electric motor. The test lasts a hundred hours and reproduces the wear and tear which follows frequent journeys over waterlogged and muddy roads. The excess torsion test could well be called the severe distortion test for it is designed to reproduce the worst possible operation conditions. Its object is to ensure that all components have adequate clearance under whatever conditions the car may have to serve. It's a 
job which calls for much painstaking work. All the necessary clearances must be measured and carefully checked. Does the top wishbone of the front wheel suspension foul the boss of some cradle boat? Is there enough clearance between tire tread and chassis frame at full lock? Center of gravity is something which rarely worries us until we're cornering fast or driving over very rough roads. It is then we have cause to be thankful for this test. The procedure is simple if you know how, and if you have the necessary tackle. A few more yards of chain and she'll be up. To help him read the angle, there's an oversized protractor. Few motorists worry about the exact position of their center of gravity above ground, but it's interesting to know your turnover angle. Vibration is a continual cause of investigation and development. Here we see one of the most effective instruments yet designed for the investigation of unwanted body and chassis noise. Known as the de Havilland vibrator, it can vibrate the car at frequencies which cover a very wide range. The vibrations can be recorded by the oscillograph. By vibrating the car at set frequencies with the vehicle stationary, it's possible to investigate very fully any noises produced when individual parts of the car strike up answering notes. Frequencies are adjusted to bring individual parts of the car into resonance. Once isolated, the noises can be eliminated by simple modification in design. This elaborate test rig is built for the cooling test. Air is supplied through the canvas trunking to the radiator of the car, which is mounted on a dynamometer which provides a wide range of running conditions. Airflow is regulated to give a pressure equivalent to running speeds ranging from 15 to 50 miles an hour. Direct readings of the power developed, together with figures for bonnet and radiator temperatures, enable the efficiency of the radiator system to be calculated. It's a test to ensure that the modern engine will operate well in all climates. Now for more vibration tests. The MG stands on a special car vibrator which can impart either pivotal or vertical movement to its frame at both front and rear. The instruments they are using are vibration recorders. Each wheel vibrates independently and each is out of phase with the other. What the technicians are concerned with is the rigidity of the car's structure. It's a test which shows to what extent the vibrations of the car's separate parts are in or out of phase. Any abnormal divergence in this matter would result in the car literally shaking itself to pieces. most important of all the vibration tests that take place, for on its findings depends the fundamental design of the entire car. Another dynamometer is used for this colonial test. The car rides on drums on which are formed bumps and hollows to reproduce the surface of the roughest colonial road. Dynamometer readings show actual road speeds. The test is far more severe than anything likely to be met with on the roughest tracks abroad. It's tough on the man at the steering wheel and a severe test for all components. But it's toughest of all on the tires. Four sets can be worn out through fatigue of the walls in 50 hours running. <laughs> 